welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have you all here once again. You cannot see me right now because I am doing something that I have never done before while hosting this show. You can only hear me because I am actually on my way driving back to um, our store um, to get our show started. So didn't want to delay it any further. So I wanted to get going here with our program. I will be with you shortly. Um, it's nice to have Tom and Phil back in uh, the house. How's everybody doing? Wonderful. Just ducky today. Oh, yeah. As, everybody, as uh, many of you know, I run doing around. Doing okay. Sorry, my, I was mute. <laughs> I uh, run around my uh, head cut off some days, and that's one of those days here today. Um, but it is all good. It's beautiful out today, so it's a nice day here. Um, I do want to talk about the Red Sox. Um, I know um, last time that we were together, uh, we had an NFL draft last week. So we need to talk about our thoughts on Mac Jones and some of the rest of the additions here for the Patriots in their draft. We need to talk about the Bruins and then um, a little bit of Celtics because they're getting ready to wrap down their season. Um, I would like to lead off today with the Red Sox. Um, I'm not actually very happy with their performance right now. I'm a little fed up with some changes that I feel need to be made. I'm a little concerned on how this team has looked in the past week. They lost three out of four against the Texas Rangers, one of the worst teams in baseball. And they are struggling mightily with this Detroit Tigers team that's here at Fenway uh, right now. And Detroit is kind of putting a pounding on the Red Sox right now. Uh, they won their first game in the series, but last night there was a extra innings game and the Red Sox lost in extra innings. And today they are getting, um, they're getting hit all over the park with um, Avaldi, who did not throw well to start. And the lineup, thankfully, decided to show up today. So uh, I'm definitely concerned. I wasn't earlier, but now I am. There's a lot of things that need to happen with this team. I don't know what you guys have seen or heard or, or know about, but I think it's time we uh, criticize them a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really – obviously, I, I don't know. I can't see – and I can't really watch the game, so I don't really know what's going on, but um... – I mean, oh, I see like you're, you're getting consistent. On. You're you're getting consistent. Your uh, production from JD. Uh, you're getting consistent production from Bogarts and with Devers for the most part. But they do not have a leadoff hitter. They are getting exposed for a lot of their flaws of not having enough depth. Uh, there's definitely some holes in the pitching department that are starting to show. I think a lot of people got super excited about this. After being 0-3 with winning, what was it, eight or nine games in a row, whatever it was, against crappy teams, I think fans got a little too excited. I think that's really, to tell you the truth, what happened. And now we're starting to see them come back down to earth here a little bit. Still a likable product, but I don't love what I see currently. Well, I mean, the good news is at least the bats that we wanted to produce this year are producing. Obviously, we need to see more from other guys now that have are you know had to be brought up this year. Yep. Um, I definitely agree that fans probably did get excited, but like you said, they haven't really played many good teams, and you know, um, and from what I heard, they got pretty lucky against Jacob Degrom against the Mets they so they have gotten pretty lucky and they got lucky with DeGrom basically because they only were able to score one run I mean it's not like this was a, a great game or anything they still have, are very inconsistent with hitting the baseball yeah I mean what is going on <laughs> can you hear me yeah yeah we can hear you oh i am transitioning right back now into um my computer but just overall i think that they need to figure out franchi cordero bobby Dahlback can't hit anything um 
So I, I expect a little bit more. I expect a little bit more from this team. Yeah, I I agree. I think they can be a little – I think they can be better. Um, I mean, obviously, they're in first right now, which is good, but, you know, we don't know. It's, it's a long season, and who knows how long that's going to last. Well, yeah, that, that's the thing. Um, it is a long season. I think we're seeing a team that, yeah, they're okay, but how good will they be? when and push comes to shove against better opponents. You know, if you can't beat the Texas Rangers and you can't beat the, uh, the, uh, the Detroit Tigers for teams, I just, you, you're, in, you're in for a lot of issues. If, well, that's, it's never, if that's how it's gonna be. It's an ever repeating cycle that we see in Boston sports with any, any of our professional teams or the, the ones that we talk about anyway is when we, when we come up against teams that, you know, we should easily beat. We don't play well against them. And then when we come up against teams that, you know, we expect the challenge from, we, you know, we end up playing well against them and sometimes we beat them. Sometimes we don't. Correct. Um, Phil, I am just right by my computer now. I think it's waiting for me to get in on this other way. There we go. And I might be double audioing. I'm gonna you need headphones. Headphones would work. Yes, I do. Let's see if this works now. There we go. Can you yeah. see? Now you can see me. There we go. There I am. The ghost of me returns. Um. So like I was saying with the teams and how everything is looking like, I think that there needs to be some changes. You know, the minor league season just began and you have some different options to look for. I wouldn't be surprised to see Michael Chavis back up with the club. It could be tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised to see Cordero sent down, Dahlback sent down, Danny Santana coming up or somebody else getting, getting some work with everything. You can't, you, you can't go through put batters that are hitting a buck, you know, like a hundred or a buck 50 and like Cordero's over his last 34 or something like that. You're starting to see those flaws come out and that's got to change. So I just don't know how much leeway or how much room they're going to give for some of these players to get their acts together. So I, I was high. I'm a little low now on how I feel with this team right now. You're definitely seeing team this the team a team that their flaws are, are greatly showing from, you know, not signing certain players in the off season, not having enough depth, um, not even having Brock Holt. I mean, that, that's a huge loss. Even Jackie Bradley's loss is huge. The outfield defense has been horrible. Ben Intendi not being here. Ben Intendi's doing great now for the Royals after a rough couple of weeks, but now he's doing fine. So how you get to a point where you're going to get production from players that you brought in to replace those guys is just a matter of time. Is it going to happen? Is it not? I'm kind of running out of time, kind of losing my patience a little bit with what I've seen so far, but I do love what I see from Xander. I love what I see from Devers and JD. They are, they are the heart and soul of the team right now. And it, the buck kind of stops with them. So that's the outlook on the Sox. They are playing right now. It's a battle of. It was eight to seven in the, in the seventh last I saw. So I will say we did talk about him last week. Matt Barnes has been an absolute breath of fresh air. He's the <laughs> lever of the month for the month of April. That's just shocking to me. And um, I, I, I'm dumbfounded. It, it's like he's a whole new player, you know, from what he's doing right now. So I hope that that continues on that front. Um, anything else on the Sox front? Anybody want to add? Um, I don't have so anything on the Sox front. I do have something baseball related, though, that just right. broke today. I don't know if you heard. Um, I think I did rumblings of it, yes. Albert Pujols is no longer going to – well, no longer going to be playing for the Major League Club of the Angels. He will either be cut or moved down to the minors. What a disaster oh, wow. it was for the ass for the Angels for that move. You know, Pujols had such a great career with the Cardinals. He's still Hall of Famer. He's still yeah. 
<laughs> one of the best that he would like. And I'm, I, it was one more deal, one more year left on the deal. So it's one of those things where you got to make some sort of a move. It was one of the worst contracts I think the game has ever seen. Yeah. And too far in his career, too. It was very bizarre. Was probably I'm just saying I'm done because I don't think yeah. any other people. I don't I think the Cardinals pick him back up just to have him just to retire for a day or something yeah. like that. But yeah. I just don't I don't see I don't see it. A great career, one of the best that's played, but yeah. definitely definitely not surprised in the move. I forgot he was still playing, to be honest. Lot of people did. I mean, <laughs> like, I'm not gonna I because I remember when he signed that contract and it was like it was like it was it like it was like a ten year two thousand one. They have thirty million left on it to pay him. Jesus. Yep, that's how crazy it is with these contracts. Easy money. Yeah. Yep. Well, I will uh, say a Red Sox point. I think Erod is pitching pretty well, and he's, I don't know, he might be their ace. It's certainly not Evaldi. It's 8-8 eight yeah. eight right now in the seventh inning. Against oh, wow. Well, Evaldi no. was, Evaldi was pitching so pretty Detroit well. He's got a really good ball club right now. He's got a real good team. So, yeah. they've got, got to change. Yeah. Detroit must have just scored then, because last I looked while you were uh, transitioning. Open is, outside of Barnes Sox. really has been trashed. So, could be a rough stretch. We'll see what happens. They take on the Orioles, who just had a no-hitter from John Hughes yesterday. They look better than the Red Sox. So, that's how the story goes. They're still Yankees at the bottom of the division, catch. though. <laughs> yep. Yankees are going to come and catch up. So, you take the pedal yeah, off. It's, you know, you it's, it's a long season, man. You're going to get exposed, and you're getting exposed right now. Long season, so hopefully, hopefully they'll figure some things out. Want to move to the Bruins. Um I, again, I'm loving this move. You're still seeing more and more of how great it's been to have Taylor Hall and Riley and uh, Lazar. They've done great. I was not so pleased with the after clinching game of going to the playoffs on Tuesday night. You probably saw the last time of uh, Yarrow Halak and next to the Bruins. I don't know. I think I think I saw more action from his broken stick with his temper tantrum at the end of blowing that game than I have in the last month of any kind of production from him in that. So, Swayman will be the backup in the playoffs. Oh, Just absolutely. Watch. absolutely. Just watch. And don't be surprised if something happens. You know, Rask is playing okay right now, but I like the luxury of having Swayman versus Halak. You're not going anywhere with Halak. You're not. Well. I mean, you, you can clearly see how, how bad he is now, you know, after I know he's, you know, I don't know, I know he came in a little cold into that game, but he was kind of on a downhill slope before he even got hurt or got COVID or whatever it was yep. um, or both for that matter. Tuesday was one of those games where I think Cassidy was like the last straw of if what, what we're going to do here with Rask or with Swayman. You do have them playing the New York Rangers, and it's an interesting opponent here for Thursday and Saturday because there's been all kinds of controversies with the Rangers because of Tom Wilson, once again, in the news for being an absolute moron on the ice. So, Tom, I don't know how much you saw, how much you heard. Oh, I saw it all. I saw all the videos. But this was... I saw the another videos. one of those plays where he's not even getting a suspension. He's just getting a fine. You know, it, in my opinion, it was worse than Brandon Collins. Oh yeah. And I mean, he, he, I don't know if you saw uh, what happened the other night too, in the Pittsburgh Philadelphia game with uh, Shane Gossesphere um, yep. getting suspended for, you know, shoving, um, I don't know. I forget who it was on the Penguins into the wall. He got suspended two games. Yep. And Wilson threw two two Rangers players to the ice in yep. that game. Two so of them. Player safety of the NHL is saying that's okay. That's okay to do that. That's what they're saying. Yep. That's, that's a big that's, problem. That's a huge problem. So the Rangers ended up firing yesterday their GM and I think their director of ops or something like that. Um, that's one of the worst owners in professional sports. That's James Dolan, who also owns the New York Knicks. And that guy is, is just, he's a dirt bag. He doesn't give two craps about his fans. He doesn't care about getting a good product on the ice and everything or on the court. He's very toxic owner, very toxic. So 
he went out and fired up everybody. So er, uh, like the Rangers have been all in the news about how they handled it. I thought the Rangers handled it correctly. I thought it was disgusting on what happened. They outspoke and they said that this was unacceptable on what Wilson does and continues to get away with. So yeah, I'm, they camp, got I'm, all, I'm, I'm totally with the Rangers on, on that. Mm-hmm. There's other people that are in the camp of, you need to shut your mouth and you need to just go out and play, stop being a bunch of babies and figure it out. Yeah, the NHL out. fined the Rangers for, uh, you know, speaking out about it. I would be shocked if we don't see the Bruins this evening get a victory tonight against the Rangers. They're just in all disarray right now. All disarray. Um, I mean, well, they don't even have Panera now. So no, I, I, think, was a I think he's a big key deal for the Bruins. I think he's a big key to – you know, helping the Rangers win. I don't think they're a, they're a team that can survive without him. You, we've we've yeah. seen it where he hasn't played. We've seen it where he hasn't played, and um, when he has played, and they're a completely different team you know, with him on the ice. Yep. Um, now he was with. Um, tell me again who he was with originally. Was it the Devils? Blackhawks. Blackhawks. Okay. Blackhawks. Yeah. Yeah, so, he was on the Patrick Kane. A big impact player there that definitely has made a difference for the Rangers and you take him out of the action for it. And in the Bruins best, best case scenario there, they don't, they have one less player they have to worry about and deal with, with um, their upcoming two games against the Rangers. The Bruins will have two games against the Rangers. It'll go Thursday and Saturday. Then they finish off Monday and Tuesday. We have a game with the, is it the Devils? Islanders, the Islanders, Islanders and then the Caps. Yeah. So well, the, I don't the know Caps exactly who we're playing yet. It might be the Capitals' first round. Um, I the way it's looking right now is it most likely will not be the Capitals. I hope um, not. It looks it looks like it's it would be the Penguins. Um, but there's also a chance that we could you know win the, out the division, um, depending on how everybody else ends up playing. Um, cause we have two games at hand on the Penguins, one game at hand on the Capitals and we are four game points. Um, uh, we are four points behind both teams. It's, it's doable. I just and don't know Island- how realistic it is with Rask coming out and saying, well, I think I'd rather rest until the playoffs come. I don't know what the mentality is. I, I am in the camp of getting everybody as healthy as they can. So I want to see Carlo back to full strength. I want to see Kevin Miller you know, getting everything ready to go so he can play, you know, here on out. I don't want to I see mean, an injury. I'd be, I'd be okay with Rask resting, except for the fact that we have a back-to-back Monday and Tuesday, yeah. Islanders and Caps. So, I mean, so he Swayman obviously has to I, – I wouldn't mind seeing Swayman, you know, play against the Rangers, start against the, both games against the Rangers, and then, um, you know, probably put Swayman against the Islanders and have Rask start against the Caps. Yeah. Um, that's the alternative that you might be able to see. So, but we'll, I mean, we'll I'm totally, I'm totally okay with Rask, you know, taking three games off. I mean, it's he's better got than a lot to prove this playoff. He's got to get his head right. He's got to be in it to win it. He's got to get the, he's got to get it off his back. You know, it's been on his back for a while. He just does no Stanley Cup to his name, so he needs to figure it out. Yeah, I mean the good news. The good news is there's no bubble. He doesn't have to be away from his family, um, so that kind of helps. Yep. Um, what's crazy is that the Carolina Hurricanes have the most points in the NHL this season. That's just shocking to me. Shocking. They don't scare me. I don't know about no. You. I I mean I'm not. They're they're a good team, but I just don't think they have the capability of getting to the the playoff. I don't either. I don't either. So we'll see. We hope they finish with good health and good strength to get on their good ride that this playoff will be. It's and and I still look at it as kind of a Stanley Cup or bust kind of mode. Again, you can't blow another opportunity here with the Krejci's, the Bergeron's, the Martian and the Rafts of the world because it's it's getting older. It's going to come to an end. So it's now or never. Not up. Um, hey, I don't know. sleep on those hurricanes. Yeah. That's my take. Let's go, let's go to the Celtics next. We'll finish with the Patriots last. Um, I, I still don't know where they're going to go in this playoff run. I think that they're going to get the Knicks first round. 
They might. I don't know how you're feeling towards it. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm in the same boat as I was last week. It's great. Jason Tatum scored 60. Wonderful. Go and win something. I'm still in that same camp. <laughs> Go and win what? You mean just the Go championship? Is that what you're talking about? Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't like the 60 thing is nice. I mean, but they also put themselves in, you know, and Brad Stevens put it perfectly. It's like, you know, it was disgusting how they played yep. up until and how they, I mean, the comeback's great. You know, it's full of mixed emotions, but, you know, it's, it's, come on, they know what they need to do. And even like the thing that got me was like the game after uh, it was, uh, what was it? You had, sorry, you had, um, against Portland, you know, the Celtics had a chance to win that and they kind of puked, uh, puked on themselves at the end. I think that's a good way of saying it. And, and it's not like, you know, they didn't play de- No team really played that good defense at all, but you know, you could have the seeds. I mean, they did, you know, they battled back and forth and Portland's not a bad team by any stretch really. I mean, they, you, they're like seventh uh, seed in the, um, in the West, but they're still uh, pretty good. And they have, uh, two of the best uh, two guards probably in the league, possibly. I mean, you can make an argument, um, but I don't know. They sh- still should have won that game. Um, I mean, they didn't have Kemba, but you know, I don't know, but they took care of business with Orlando. Like that, like they should have, like if they struggled with them, I was they kinda, cracking you know what I mean? up laughing. I don't know if you saw any of the game or know what was going on. But my goodness, that home court announcer, when those players would go and score a three when they're down 30 or something like that. Oh, he goes crazy, yeah. It had to have been the most obnoxious, annoying thing I've ever heard in my, my life. What do they got to do? I mean, it's just kind of like, I well, mean, what do we do holy now? Holy God, was that. It was brutal. And I hate having the same takes as Felger and all those kind of people, but... I couldn't stop laughing at their take they had last night on their show. Um, it was, oh, was terrible. with Holly and him. Yeah. Oh, it actually is pretty good. I don't know yeah. if you've seen it. Oh no, I like I like both of those guys. I, I like uh, Holly and, and the uh, most. Felger. What's annoying Felger? What's annoying Holly? And yeah. Holly said that it was the Orlando announcer. And, uh, <laughs> Felger got into the whole thing. JT. Four, three. <laughs> well, but also, I, it's it very. Went, I couldn't stop yeah. laughing. I my eyes were watering with how funny it was. Like, woo! What? That yeah, I mean, cried, you know, I, but it it doesn't like that's like every announcer you've ever like. Oh my uh, god! It's so bizarre it's, and it's such a weird. It's, it's so almost like forced and fake. And yeah, yeah, it's funny. Like, oh, that's hell to me. Hell to me is like an announcer just like oh. announcing everything so effervescently and just. I don't know. It's like, it's it's do you horrible. Get paid extra to have to be over the top. Like no. my goodness. No, they just so they just get a shot before each game. From the game, it was pretty. It yeah. was pretty damn funny. I must say. Well, and also the thing like JT, like you have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and they always they alternate between JB and JT for yeah. three. It always confuses the hell out of me because I can't hear that well anyway. So I'm like, I don't know who did just what. But uh, yeah, no, they're all. Uh, I don't know. It's fun, kind of when you're there a bit, but even then, that's kind of a thing. But I don't know, man. Uh, but the, the Celtics in general, to kind of wrap that up. Yeah, I don't know. They're, uh, they're a game behind the Knicks for the fourth spot. I think they can get it. They play the Knicks. The last game of the season, they play the Knicks. And they play the Heat, like, I think twice. That's what it would be. I think that's what it would be, too. And I think I want the Knicks, I'd say, the first round. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would – listen, I would take – because if they don't play, you know, if they get, like, the six – like, see, they'll play Milwaukee. If they get the seventh, I think they play Brooklyn. Yeah. So, I mean, like, and I don't think they can match up against, uh, well, maybe more Milwaukee-esque. But honestly, man, I would like, uh, yeah, I, I I think a Boston-New York suit would be a lot of fun, to be honest. I don't think if they don't even make it out of the first round. I don't. Yeah. Oh, of course. I but don't. Of course it is. That's my I like, bold take. I'm going to be shocked. I don't think it's bold, but I think – uh, you don't, you know, you're not far off with that. I don't think um, there's a very good chance they don't, they don't make it out of the first round if they keep doing what they're doing. The last thing I did want to mention here in our show for today is I do want to talk about your opinions on what you feel this whole draft was like. I want to know how we feel on this. In my opinion, it was a shocker. I didn't expect Mac Jones. I didn't even want to mention him. 
because I thought he was going to the, uh, the 49ers. That's why I didn't make any any sort of uh, connection with the Patriots. I, I just didn't think that was even possible. So I'm shocked that they got him. Uh, I'm not, given given the relationship between Nick Saban and Bill Belichick. Um, obviously, like, yeah, he probably, uh, you know, everybody's surprised that he went earlier. But um, at the same time, I bet Bel- I think Belichick was going in just thinking Mac Jones the whole time. He probably could have. I mean, the and, I, mean I thought we we're going to take him, and I thought the Patriots might have that tra- might have Trey Lance. That that's what I was thinking. Well, who knows? He might, you know, he might have tilted his ear a little bit, gotten in, uh, gotten in San Fran's head. And I still said, think listen, this is what it is. Story here. I still think there's more to the story on what goes on with this Jimmy Garoppolo saga. I still do. I mean, as of right now, Cam's the starting quarterback. <laughs> um, any other any other likes that you had from the draft? Uh, they're they're both their second and third round picks are supposed to be pretty good. The third round pick, um, I forget his name, but he's excited to come here and play for Belichick. Yeah. Um, the second that rounder. That? Is, what is that? The running back? No, the running back was from Alabama. He was the second rounder. That's third. what I think is a very good move because it's the first time we get like this a big dude ever since we had um what's his name? What's his name? I love Garrett Blunt. Blunt. Yeah. yeah, we haven't had that big boulder that's there to you know clog it in because I think it's been a struggle. I think they're at the goal line. I mean, we saw it with Brady the last few times when he was QB and then obviously last year. Goal line scoring was a problem. So this could help correct that problem. Yeah, the third rounder, I think, was either a linebacker or a lineman. Yeah. I think – oh, he was an outside tackle. That's what he was. I still think it's going to be interesting to see where Aaron Rodgers heads. I don't think that he is going to be with the Packers because, I mean, same deal. Aaron Rodgers hasn't spoken to his family in like 10-plus years. So, if they come out and they say he doesn't want to play, then he's probably just going to retire. And he'll do the same thing that Gronk did and then go and sign with whatever team that he really wants to. And the Red Sox blow it again. Way to go. This team is just phenomenal right now. Um, so that's – Well, he I wouldn't – yeah, I mean, but – I know uh, Denver's interested. They put a call in. Yeah, but he wouldn't be able to – He to move him. He wouldn't be able to um, – he wouldn't be able to come back out of retirement and sign with whatever team he wanted to unless Green Bay allowed him to. Yeah. And they probably Ever, because of Brett Favre, because of Brett Favre, that's that yeah. that changed. Yeah. So. So that's right, I, I would how respond, you know, but how, I'm how, how do you a little feel on the whole matter? Uh, hi, little boy. He's waving. Uh, Mac hi. Jones, I enjoy to a degree. I mean, I want to see where it goes. Yeah, Cam Newton's your quarterback whether we all like it or not, but Hey, this is where we're at. I like, like, I agree with what Tom said. I like those other picks. Uh, I especially like how they moved up to get that, um, was it, um, outside linebacker, was it? Yeah. They yeah. needed a new linebacker with Chung retiring yeah. and all that. I think this adds in another, another level and from Michigan. So same kind of Chase Winovich kind of, kind of, uh, connection. Don't, don't be surprised to see Mac Jones start in week four, week three or four. I would not be surprised. I would be very surprised. I I don't think I would be surprised if Cam Newton's even still part of this team. Hey, he's a Bill guy now. Yeah, we'll have to see. That's going to do it here for another episode here of Face the Facts. We apologize for the beginning. Personally, I do for being all over the place with doing the audio and then jumping in from stuff. But you know what? You got Face the Facts, so that's all that matters. So. We wish all of our teams uh, well, the Red Sox. Uh, we hope they get their acts together because, again, they're losing to the lovely Detroit Tigers. They may lose two out of three to this team. Oh, and another one, and Cordero has no clue how to play left field, and it drops right in. It's just a comedy hour right now. It's just it's, – give me a glove and a bat. I'll go play. I'll play for free. I don't really care. So. That's my take on them. We want to hope the Bruins finish their season off on the on a right foot. Same goes with the Celtics. Get healthy, get ready, because 
maybe they will do something in the playoffs. I don't know. So we'll see. Um, and we'll join you next time for another episode here of Face the Facts. See you all later.